Hello, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to teach you all about creating a promotional poster for an event coming up using the subject that we've talked about in the previous videos, Kelly Brandt. Here we have Kelly Brandt's logo that we created in Adobe Illustrator. What we're going to do is create a poster using Adobe InDesign. You can see here what the final poster will look like. We're going to use an image of the killer whales as well as some copy and her logo to make it all tie together. So let's get started. The first thing I've done is created a new document. This document is the wrong size, so we're going to need to create something a little bit bigger so that it fits for our poster. So I'll need to change the document size by going to File, Document Setup. Inside of Document Setup, you can see the width and height, but the units that they're in is not inches. This is actually a unit called picas, so we're going to need to change that first. I'll go ahead and cancel out of this, then return to the InDesign menu under Preferences and adjust the Units and Increments feature. Within Units and Increments, we can change the horizontal and vertical ruler units from picas to inches. And I want to do this for both of these. And confirm that change by clicking the OK button. Now that I've done this, I can then return to the File, Document Setup menu, and adjust the height and width of the document. The width for this, we want to have it 18 inches. And we want to make the vertical height 24 inches. I'm also going to need to add bleed to this document. This allows the printer to print color all the way to the edge of the document. To do this, place your cursor within the bleed area and type in quarter of an inch, 0.25. And then, as long as they're all linked, it should confirm this for all four regions, top, bottom, inside, and outside. Then, to confirm all these changes, select OK. My document is now larger, large enough to be a poster, Plus, it has this little bit of bleed around the edges so that we can print color all the way to the edge. Now I'll need to add a rectangle frame. I'll do this by selecting the Rectangular Frame tool. I want to place my cursor at the very top left-hand corner of the bleed region, and then drag from the top left to the bottom right of the bleed guideline. Once I've added this rectangular frame, I want to change the color to be blue. I'm going to double-click on the color picker, and then change the color to a blue. I think kind of a dark blue. Not totally saturated, but something that's sort of in that dark region. That looks about right. The next thing I'm going to do is add a text layer. To do this, I'll select the Tag tool, and then bring my cursor over to the frame, click and drag, and create a text region. Once I've created my text box, I'll change the font size from 12 points all the way up to, say, 48 points. And then type out the title of the event. Once I've typed out the title for the event, I'll increase the size a little bit more, say ramp it up to about 60 points. I also want to change the color to white. And finally, let's change the font type. We'll change it from Minion to Palantino Linotype. I'm noticing that the word genetics is being hyphenated because it doesn't fit on one line. So what I'm going to do is go to the paragraph setting at the top toolbar and then adjust the hyphenate feature so that it doesn't automatically hyphenate each word. Now that we've added text to this document, I'm going to return to Adobe Illustrator and copy the logo and paste it into InDesign. I first select the logo that I want to copy, Command-C or Control-C on a PC, and copy it. Then, go back to InDesign, select the graphic frame, and right-click to paste into. Now that I've pasted it into this graphic frame, I'm going to expand the graphic frame found in my Layers menu and select the group which is, in fact, the logo that I'm looking to adjust. I'll move it down and then scale it up by holding Shift while grabbing one of the corners of the logo. I want to position it such that it's towards the bottom left-hand corner. And notice that the edge is hanging off because of the way that we pasted it into this graphic frame. Now that I've repositioned and resized the logo, I'm going to go into the Object menu, into the Effects category, and adjust the transparency. I want to reduce this transparency a little bit so that it blends in a little bit better with the background. I think somewhere between uh, 50 and 80. I'll try 60%. And then say OK to confirm that change. Now what I'm going to do is to place an image to give this thing a little bit more flair. I'll go to the File menu and then select Place, which is Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC. Now what I want to do is select the Killer Whale PSD and then select Open to import this into the document. Then to place the item, I use my mouse 
to click on the document wherever I'd like it to land. Now that I've placed this image, I'll use the free transform tool to resize the image, grabbing it from the bottom right hand corner and scaling it up. I can also use my arrow keys to reposition this if I want to make subtle adjustments instead of just using the mouse. So I'll nudge it up just a little bit so that it's about the same width as the text box below. I've proceeded to make all the additional changes to finish this poster. Now it's time to take it to press. Before I print this document, however, I need to save it as a PDF. This will ensure that all of the layers, type, and photographs are self-contained in a single document. To export this document for the printer, I'm going to go to File, Export, and then select Adobe PDF as the format. Select Save, and then in the next window, we want to keep this as the default of press quality, and select Export. And there we have it. We've finished the poster, and it's ready to take to print. And that's just one more component in building your portfolio and your personal identity and brand. Thanks for watching.